want to check whether I can share it. Um, yes. Can you see my screen now? Yes, everything seems to be okay. Okay, good. Uh, first, I would like to thank to all of you, especially the organizer, to having me here. I will speak about the third law of uh, thermodynamic in non-equilibrium jump process. Okay, I'm Faze and I'm working with uh, Professor Christian Maus, my supervisor, and this is joint work with uh, Christian Maus and Carol Nitochny. Uh, the contents that I will speak about at first, I will give you an introduction that uh, what is the calorimetry in equilibrium, what is the third law in equilibrium, and then we will go to non-equilibrium calorimetry. I will give you some uh, main ingredient that we need. And then as an example, we will see uh, what, uh, what uh, the contents are. And uh, finally, the third law of thermodynamic in uh, non-equilibrium. This is slide, I, I will not use the, the notation, but it's just calorimetry in equilibrium. Just remember that, okay, we have first law of thermodynamic, we have entropy. There is a definition for heat capacity. Of course, it's not always for uh, volume uh, fix, but okay, uh, it's depend on temperature and heat. Uh, just uh, some uh, reminder, but we will not use it. Uh, the mm, mm, third law of thermodynamic is uh, actually is a Nernst heat theorem, and um, uh, it has different versions. But the version and the uh, the result of that that is really important is telling that when a temperature is going to zero, the heat capacity also is going to zero. But uh, the Nernst heat theorem at the first it wasn't as a law. It's uh, I mean uh, because it's not uh, universal, and people cannot uh, could not uh, accept it as a third law of thermodynamic. But of course now this is accepted, and uh, it has a condition, and it's not universal same as the uh, uh, first law of thermodynamic. And uh, what is the condition? In some cases, it's satisfying. And when the ground state uh, is uh, uh, non-degenerate, it's satisfying. And if degenerate, it's not satisfying. And it has a real uh, example in life. And spin ice is one of the material that it's not uh, satisfying the third law of thermodynamic in uh, equilibrium. OK, what uh, is uh, non-equilibrium colorimetry? Um, I will give you two important ingredients. First one is quasi-potential. Uh, just consider, this is a cartoon, it's not simulation. Uh, just consider a heat bath, just consider water, a big container of water, and you are heating that uh, with the joule heating. And uh, first of all, I mean, it's, I'm telling that it's a big uh, container because uh, uh, we can fix the temperature on that. And first of all, we have in a, we, uh, this is open system, it's non-equilibrium, and we are in a steady state, non-equilibrium steady state. And then we perturb it in the temperature. Okay, we can perturb in another parameter, but we consider the temperature. And then we again are in a new, after a lot of fluctuation, we are in a new steady non-equilibrium. And we measure in, uh, each state, we uh, measure uh, the mean uh, dissipated power. The time integral of these uh, differences of these two is quasi-potential that you can see that we define it like that. And we are hoping and we put it like that, uh, that uh, uh, it's going to, I mean, this is the integral is a well-defined. It means that in the time going to infinity, this one uh, uh, going to, I mean, the limit of this one. And uh, if you want to see that, what does it mean exactly in equilibrium, uh, this quasi potential is in terms of the energy of each state. Uh, uh, minus of uh, the average. Okay, it, uh, the quasi-potential was the main ingredient, and the other one is definition of the heat capacity in terms of quasi-potential. Uh, this beta is inverse of temperature. Uh, the derivative of temperature uh, for uh, 
I mean, the quasi potential, we give you the heat capacity. And because the mean uh, value of the, the V uh, quasi potential is zero, you can write it like that. Uh, I will not uh, describe everything. You can see uh, the details in non equilibrium colorimetry uh, paper with Christian Mouse and uh, Karel. And now, very fast, uh, we cover uh, an example. Just um, consider a quantum switch that with the rate alpha, it's a switch in, I mean, it's two level system with the rate alpha is just uh, uh, changing. And uh, whenever it's changing the state from ground state to excited state, it's giving, I mean, it's releasing heat and change, exchanging the heat to the environment. Uh, and we define it as a Markov jump process. You can model it in a four state uh, graph. And uh, okay, the main idea is that we can measure the heat capacity as we define it in previous uh, slide. When uh, it's in equilibrium, the heat capacity for different uh, alpha is uh, the plot is like that, that this is a standard uh, heat, uh, I mean, uh, plot of the heat capacity. You can uh, just search it and see that, oh, uh, in equilibrium heat capacity is like that. It has a very well-known peak. And then it's going to zero in zero temperature as a third law. And if it's not equilibrium and you are breaking data balance, then uh, uh, you are going to non-equilibrium. And the heat capacity, it can, it can be negative as well. I'm not speaking why and when it's negative. Uh, it's another purpose. <laughs> but uh, it's at the point as the, of this uh, example is that we can measure, we can calculate the heat capacity in a non-equilibrium. OK. And what is the main theorem? The extended term law um, in non-equilibrium uh, is telling that heat capacity is going to zero as well, the heat capacity that we define. And uh, I, I just opened this mean as a nothing special, and it's just uh, that they are equal to each other. We want to tell that in two condition, this heat capacity, when temperature is going to zero, it's going to zero. Just remember that in uh, equilibrium, we have one condition. And, and now in non-equilibrium, we have two conditions. And what are our two conditions? <laughs> we, uh, OK, there we have two conditions. The first one is same as equilibrium. It's telling that the ground state must be uh, the unique, the dominant state uh, must be in the low temperature must be the unique uh, dominant state. And the other one is telling that all of the state must be accessible to each other. I mean, enough accessible, but what does it mean enough? It's, I mean, uh, I mean we have a mathematical exp uh, expression for that and we exactly know when it's uh, um, satisfying and when not, but the intuition is that for for example, uh, here, uh, okay, uh, I will describe it uh, exactly uh, in the uh, next uh, slide, but just remember we need accessibility, accessibility and we need that uh, one unique dominant state. And what is the idea? The idea is that if you need one dominant state, then uh, uh, this row as a stationary distribution can be zero, zero because everything is focused in one place. And if V is bonded as a quasi potential, then uh, mathematically it's going to zero as well. This accessibility is speaking about the uh, bondedness of a quasi potential. But what is the meaning of that? <laughs> um, yes. Um, imagine uh, the dominant state in this graph is here, and then every state wants to go here. And if there is just one pass from here to here, and it's difficult to pass here, it's not enough accessible. And if you add one edge, then you give the chance to be more accessible. Okay, in the graph, if you have more edges, it means that they are more accessible together, but we will see the meaning of that. To know uh, what is the uh, why a D row uh, when it's a unique dominant state is going to zero and what is in low temperature, how it's look like, you can see these um, papers um, for the low temperature. 
And now look at this example. I give the energy for these states, energy four, two, three. And if the energy of U is six, is different from the time that it's 10, for example. We can easily calculate it uh, uh, via matrix first theorem as well, and via every approach that the dominant state is uh, this one. And then uh, he, uh, for this state, particle want to go from here, I mean, from here to there. And if energy is 10, it needs more work to do to pass from this state to go here. And it's the only way that must pass is this way. And uh, quasi potential is not bounded here. But if U is 6, it's compatible with the dominant state, then uh, it's reasonable and it can, it's, it's bonded. Another way that if we add one edge as a tuning, okay, it can possible we have the tuning, then we are adding to this, I mean, we are giving chance for this accessibility. So the third law of the thermodynamic and non-equilibrium has two condition. Under these two condition, the heat capacity is going to zero. The first condition is that in the low temperature, you need only a one dominant state. And the second thing is speaking about the accessibility. If all of the states are more ex enough accessible to each other, then you will be sure that a heat capacity is going to zero. There are the papers uh, that, uh, okay, uh, the concepts and the physical meaning and more, uh, con uh, I mean, not, uh, mathematical, a lot of mathematical relation you can see in this paper and all of the mathematical proof that it's um, under, I mean, it's a real graphical uh, representation. It's in this paper. Uh, but what does it mean of graphical representation? I've, I gave you a mark of uh, jump process uh, in this slide. Uh, yes, yes, uh, we will define a mark. We, we are defining a mark of jump process. And then whatever we have, it's a depend of the graph. And uh, the main idea for quasi potential, just for those who are uh, interested uh, for uh, a stationary distribution is via matrix two theorem and uh, for uh, quasi potential is via uh, matrix forest theorem and uh, then yes i've done yes thanks thank you um, yes have, i'm yes i'm ready time. for the question yeah we have time for a question or two I don't see you and it's really strange